We thank you for this wonderful and blessed opportunity together to be able to look at one another's face and yet be alive. We praise you, we honor you, we magnify you, we lift you up. Now God, I have a one request this morning, that is that you let me preach. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for me. Get that, those of you with the electronic devices, get that. Those of you with iPads, get that. Those of you that don't have a Bible or iPad or iPhone, look on with somebody. <laughs> Amen. Mark chapter number 16. And I'm going to read verses 6 and 7 to you here. Is that all right? Yeah. And he said unto them, Be not afraid. He seeks Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. How many of you know that God can change anybody? <laughs> Better yet, how many of you have been changed? <laughs> well, if you've been changed, you know that it's not easy to make change. Because when you've done something for a long time, it's hard to let that thing go. Yeah. Even when it is not pleasing to God. Yeah. And if the truth be told, we all mess up. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. You might as well go ahead on and say amen. Yeah. Because that's a fact of life. We all mess up. Yeah. Even when we are trying to do right, Sometimes we still mess up. So I'm going to tag this text this morning. When you mess up. One of the reasons we have people like Peter in Scripture is because Peter gives us an example of what to do when you mess up. Now, 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 we all know Peter. We all know Peter. He's the head honcho of the disciples. You could say that uh, out of all the disciples, that Peter was the closest disciple to Jesus. It is Peter who receives the word from God when Jesus asks the question, Who do men say that I am? And when Jesus hears Peter's declaration, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus promises Peter the king, keys to the king. There is nobody like Peter. He's a leader. He's outspoken. He has the greatest potential. He's at the top of the class of the disciples. But in spite of all of his possibilities, Peter messed up. Because during the trial of Jesus, Peter, with all of his leadership skills and possibility, denies the Christ. Not once, not twice, but he does it three times. Now I want to submit to you that Peter's threefold denial of Jesus makes what he did almost worse than what Judas did. Judas betrayed him, but I believe that given another chance, uh, Judas would have done things a little differently than he did the first time. But Peter denied Jesus and got another chance and messed that up. Then he got another chance and he messed that up. Now, 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 I know you're not going to admit it, but some of you know what it's like to stumble over the same issue time and time again. Uh, now, 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 this is not for the super sanctified on your pew. But this is for a few of us in here 
will know what it's like to have told the Lord, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll never do it again. It says that when Peter realizes what he has done, he weeps bitterly. Because when you know that you stop, when you know that you fail, when you know that you messed up time and time again, it does something to your inside. Uh, now, 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 when that happens, the enemy uses at least two things against you. Two of them. Number one, he uses a guilty conscience. Uh -huh. he, he, he uses a guilty conscience because a guilty conscience wears you out. A guilty conscience will wake you up in the middle of the night. A guilty conscience will wake you out of a dead sleep. A guilty conscience will get you when you're at the party having a good time. A guilty conscience will mess up your work. You, you in church and, and having a good time in the Lord and you look up and an ain't sleep. Y'all ain't gonna worry if it walks through the door. I, I, I found it interesting that, that, that when Peter messed up and denied Jesus, the other disciples were not even around to see. You see, it's not the stuff that folk know about you that wears you out. It's the stuff that you keep hitting. Y'all ain't saying you, you, you didn't get it, so let me do it another way. I say, can I do it another way? Somebody say, do it another way, preacher. Secret sin suffocates saints. You, you see, you see it, it's the stuff you keep hitting, the stuff you keep under the cover and under the wraps that wears you out. That's why the Bible says confession is good for the soul. Because there are some things that you just need to get out. Because living with a secret suffocates you. The enemy tries to get you, tries to get you with a guilty conscience, but if he can't get you with a guilty conscience, then he tries to get you with the consequences of what you did. Peter, Peter makes a mistake in one night, and that one mistake changed his life forever. Have you ever been there before? Yeah. Made a bad decision? Had one lapse in sound judgment, one angry outburst, one drink too many, and it changed your life forever. And now here is Peter, wondering what's going to happen now that he has failed Jesus. Wondering, trying to figure out how is God going to punish me after what I've done. And while Peter is dealing with his mess up, some women go to the tomb and find out that Jesus has been resurrected, has risen as he said. And while at the tomb, the angel gives them a message. And the message is that to go back and tell Peter, and the message is going to get Peter back on his feet. The angels give the women a message uh, that they're to give to Peter that will allow Peter to know that there is life on the other side of a mess up. Oh, that's good news right there. Now, now that's a word for somebody this morning. Somebody that's struggling with a mistake that you made. Somebody that's wrestling with a mess up uh, in your life. Uh, that even though you have made a mistake and messed up time and time again, there is life on the other side of a mess up. Now, 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 now what, what the angel tells the women is, it, 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 what, what he tells them hangs in this text like a dangling pot of soap. What, what she tells them hang, hangs in this text like, like, like the sixth finger on a hand. It, it just, just dangles. And, and the angel tells the women in the text, and he. The angel says, go and tell the disciples and Peter to meet Jesus in Galilee. Somebody say, and Peter. And Peter. Those two words, and Peter, 
gives us a place to hang our hope when we mess up. It gives us a place to find consolation when we stumble. It gives us a place to receive comfort when we blown it. It gives us a place to find support when we make the same mistake time and time again. There are at least three things uh, you need to get out of those two words, and Peter. Number one, and Peter lets us know that your calling is not counseled when you make a mistake. Great God Almighty. That's good all by itself. My, 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 my calling isn't canceled because I messed up. Tell the disciples and Peter. Now the and Peter caught my attention because the last time I checked Peter, he was a one of the disciples. So the sentence would make more sense if the angel had said, tell the disciples. But the text says, tell the disciples and Peter. That suggests that Peter ain't with the disciples anymore. Let, 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 let me see if I can make it live. I said, can I make it live? Yeah. Sister Little Girl, this chair broke here for the stool. So if I send out an email that says, tell the stewards and Roberta that there's going to be a meeting Monday night at 6 p.m., uh -huh. the and Roberta will suggest that Sister Roberta is not a part of the steward. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't different. 